I only know one human who can get accurate hits on a target while at a full run, and today's officer is not that human. Hi everyone, welcome to today's badge cam lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host, John Correa. And I'm your co-host, which is probably better for everybody, Mike Williver. And today's video comes to us from Henderson, Nevada. The Filster Enigma is a revolutionary holster chassis system that completely divorces your holster and gun from your clothing, giving you unprecedented concealment, whether in sweatpants or formal wear. It attaches to your AIWB holster via the wing and allows incredible flexibility for your concealed carry. Get yours at the link below. Call has gone out here of um, some breaking and enterings into vehicles. What has happened is an off-duty police officer has called dispatch on the phone and said that his neighbor reported that his car had been broken into and a gun stolen out of that car. And so the officer called it in. This officer who's on duty sees two suspects that match perfectly the description of the two guys that were burglarizing the vehicle and he is going to contact them and whatever ensues. Let's watch in. Hey, both of you get over here now. Got two running. Get over here now. Let me see your hands. Let me see your hands now. Westbound 310. Both of you, let me see your hands now. Let me see your fucking hands now! Go to grab it! Cross fire! Cross fire! Drop it! You got shots fired, one down. Don't, don't reach for that fucking gun! One still running, one still running. Don't move! Don't move! This was the stolen Glock. The two guys that were doing the thieving, one was 20 and one was a minor. The 20 year old is who got shot here and he did recover from his injuries. They are facing lots and lots of counts of felonies for resisting a police officer in possession of a stolen gun and car burglaries and all kinds of other fun stuff. I mean, at least the officer had rule number one of Zombieland down. Cardio. It was solid. So Mike, given the fact that the call here is a car burglary with a gun stolen, I think it's very reasonable for this officer to come out of the car with his handgun drawn and be as hard ass as he was at these guys. Yeah, we talk all the time about not coming in too hot uh, in certain situations. This is most decidedly not one of those situations. This is a time when you want to establish your, um, your presence with authority. Let them know, hey, I'm here. Hey, I know what you're doing. I know that you're stealing guns. I have a gun too. Uh, you need to do what I'm telling you. Uh, who on earth knows why these two ran uh, with a gun or later on decided to, to, when he dropped it, pick up a gun in front of an officer holding a gun on him, but whatever. Um, that's what they did. And I think this officer was at the exact appropriate arousal level. Part of me kind of hope, kind of wishes he had a, a longer gun with him, but you know, running with a long gun is kind of a problem. So whatever, it's kind of a nitpick. But yeah, I think he was right where he needed to be to get their attention and let them know um, that he's here and you're not getting away. Yeah, and we do say sometimes, hey, he came in too hot. In this case, I think he came in, you know, that's mama bear porridge right there. That is just the right temperature because he needs to control the situation. I also know here, don't want to spend too much time there, but, but notice that when he really needs to run, he puts his gun away. And I think that's good technique and off also, hey man, this officer's got wheels. Cops, you need to be able to run and that requires physical fitness. Yeah, we talked about this before. I'm not the not exactly the uh, the model of physical fitness in retirement, but when I was working, I, I had the appropriate level of fitness to do what I had to do to, uh, to protect myself and others. I do love putting the gun away, John. Almost certainly most agencies, uh, they're issuing some kind of Safari Land ALS. And those are, are, as you call them, big buckets on your hip that are very easy to get your gun into and out of. Uh, so yeah, I think holstering up here is the right the right option. Uh, one, it prevents you from doing anything goofy with a gun while you're running. For example, if you fall and accidentally have a parasympathetic reflex and fire your gun accidentally. And it just makes it easier to run, not having a big heavy object in one of your two hands. Um, and then when it came time to take the gun back out, as you can see, no problem. He gets it right back out again with that almost certainly an ALS holster. And this is what he's presented with. Our guy, uh, for whatever reason, has dropped his gun, or the stolen gun, I should say, and for whatever reason, thinks it's a good idea to try to pick it back up again. Now listen, for all the bad guys out there who could conceivably watch this channel, 
If you have a stolen gun and you don't want to get shot by the cops, yeet that thing, okay? That's how you not get shot by the cops. Or if you drop it, leave it. And, and if you don't want to get shot, empty hands, because I guarantee you when you pick the gun up, you're going to get shot and you're at least going to get shot at. And so is this officer justified in what he is doing in the moment? I think the answer to that is absolutely yes. I will say that it certainly appears that probably his problem, now we've zoomed it in here, he's probably a good seven or eight yards away from this guy. Very difficult to get accurate hits. He has two hands on the gun, but he's on a run. He is not kind of pulled up. And so that's very difficult for him to get hits. But as the guy then grabs the gun and starts running off, what you're gonna see is our officer kind of hop step a little bit there. And, and he's gonna get his hits once he gets established. But of course, right in the middle of it, he gets three, four shots off. And now he has to take a break from shooting in order to get on the radio. And I don't know how many times we have to say this, Mike, before they stop doing it. Yeah, there was, uh, I assume was already back up on the way. He put out that he was in a foot pursuit. Um, yeah, there's just no, unless there's some requirement for your agency where you have to immediately document the exact moment that you fired shots for some reason, that if that is a policy, let's, let's think about amending that and, and getting rid of that policy. Um, stay off the radio. Uh, this fight is happening right now. It's going to be over, um, uh, very quickly and no amount of you getting on the radio is going to help. In his defense, John, he just very quickly got on and said what he had to say. So at least he wasn't, wasn't rambling incoherently. He just said, Hey, shots fired. And continued and let's talk about the stance you talked about how he was running and you know it's just it's almost impossible to get an accurate hit when you're running especially at full clip even when you're walking um, the fundamentals of marksmanship require almost certainly that you are at a standstill that you've planted your feet and you are standing tall as john career likes to say and delivering effective shots had he done that the first time maybe this would have ended sooner not a big criticism i think he did a great job overall i just would like to have seen him stop and deliver rounds which he ended up doing eventually and, and he's walking at a fast clip forward here and you notice as opposed to kind of the hop step he was doing before which he didn't get any hits that at least when he was kind of forward stepping at a measured pace he was able to get hits i would argue even further if you want to get hits take that half a second stand tall and deliver and and plant your feet and get a good firing position and hit what we generally see have much more success is shoot then move, move then shoot. That is by far what happens to give the most success. He does, this is the shot that hits and the guy drops. It's kind of hard to see on the video, but you can if you're really careful, notice that he drops the gun to his right and the officer stops shooting as soon as he is done. Uh, as soon as he drops it. Now I also really like here that he doesn't compress on this guy quickly. He realizes I'm just gonna hold this guy at gunpoint and I'm gonna wait for some more help to get here. I think that was a good answer in this case instead of closing in on him hot and maybe getting into a fight over your hands. Now, this is a gun that they found on the guy's possession, a stolen Glock 19, which I joke that the Glock 19 is a millennial 1911. Everybody has to have one. And, and listen, the number one vector for stolen guns being used by criminals in America is being stolen out of unlocked cars. Do not be that guy. If you are gonna keep a firearm in the car, I think that's a mistake. Having a car gun full-time is stupid. If you, you know, have to keep one in the car because you go into a gun-free zone or something like that, your vehicle needs to have a some kind of a lockbox, a safe to keep that gun in that is attached to the vehicle because if it is attached to the vehicle and in a locking container, that usually they won't steal. They're just looking for the stuff they can get their hands on quickly. Please don't do this because you put the gun in the hands of felons and that is a bad day. Thankfully, this officer was there in the moment and covered his asp.